Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. So continuing my Halloween October, extending it into November, I used to do like three podcasts a week. And now that I'm finishing them weird and the way I edit, these are getting released in November. But here I was thinking, I got my go-to horror stuff, but I'm going to try some new things. And as you can tell from my latest podcast, it was Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, a live-action adaption of the games, basically doing Resident Evil 1 and 2 together. And that movie tried. It had a real good, you know, feel for the game, and it tried to do exactly like the game. Well, a lot of shots were taken. It just didn't work well. All the pieces didn't come together, so it's a below-average type thing. You might like it if you're a Resident Evil fan. Then I watched Resident Evil, uh, the Netflix series, a live-action TV show, which did flashbacks between three months before the outbreak and then 2032 or something like that, and, or 2036. And you saw the back and forth of these children and legacy of whatever. And it was just so many missed opportunities, not very good. And like, I, like the one thing about the, uh, the TV show, which was like a CW fucking mixture of Resident Evil was, I did like all the actresses and the actors. It just was written bad. The decision to make flashbacks just kind of ruined the feeling. Now I'm into a animated series from Netflix called Infinite Darkness. Now, here we have, uh, when we were younger, we were growing up and playing the video games, every cutscene that they started developing back in the day made us all turn to each other and say, you should make a movie like this. And it was always like you're playing this game, it looks pretty good. But whenever the cutscenes came on and they did some connective animations, it always looked great. Was, you know, every game like uh, X-Men, uh, Gears of War, like things like that. And this is what this is. It's the animation brought to a new level. And then there you go. You have a four episode first season, I think. Now, I haven't done podcasts on it. But I've watched some Resident Evil animated movies. And right off the bat, this felt familiar and too much like other stuff I've watched. It has the feeling of being something that was broken up, meaning I don't think this was maybe not, I don't know, is it proper or whatever, but it doesn't feel like it should be broken up into four parts. It should be a two-hour movie. Each one of these episodes is like 30 minutes. It has an intro, you know, type thing, an outro. It just doesn't feel like it was made for that. This is something I think you want a fan edit of, or you want to watch it from, you know, beginning to end in one sitting, because although it's a lot like the video game, hell, it's the animations from the video game done better and elevated, and it just doesn't work well i'm a big fan of leon and claire but they regulate claire to a i don't know fucking volunteer care worker in just the place they need to be and i'm just like i, I swore i watched a movie once with leon or someone said give her a gun like in like why did you just put her in these positions where Again, it feels like I'm watching something I've watched before. Just make her a badass or whatever. You don't have to make her a fucking laundry, you know, whatever. And she's doing laundry and she gets caught up in this thing again. Like, Leon, because of the games and previous movie, whatever, he is hmm, a darling of the White House. Saved the president's daughter. Now he's like a, you know, CIA bodyguard type guy. 
And Claire is doing volunteer work for some Pam and Amistan place, and I didn't like the politic angle they put on this. I just wanted a straightforward Resident Evil story, and I feel like they tried to do too much. First off, the animation's great and stuff, but enough with the walking scenes, and uh, when I'm watching a movie with live action, there are beats and breaths you take, and maybe that's where the Uncanny Valley still is, but you have to move this along, and you can't, for the sake of having... Uh, an, an angle and a scene and you walk the character in this is done too much and like other movies I've seen animated one movie in particular it feels similar to familiar the settings especially at the end I'm like didn't I see this before like an installation someone has to do the computer and somebody whose purpose was you know, justified in a way, turns into a fucking monster, and it, you see it coming all the way. I will say that I found myself in to, into it in that sense. You know, I can't rave about this, but it's not, it doesn't stand out. And it's one thing to shit on movies, and another to, like, just... What does it do? It feels like it just wastes its time. It's, you know, trying to tell you, it's like there are things going on and, you know, spoiler alert shit. I don't like giving a lot of plot twists and all that shit, but there's obvious things you see coming, but th th some things are jarring, like we're preventing a White House hacking. It's the double twisty betrayal thing, okay, and they're in a fucking submarine, and like the submarine, it's gonna explode. It doesn't explode. I just don't. Next thing you know, they're in a fucking house somewhere. I'm like, I'm not sure you really focused on this thing being cut up. It just doesn't feel right. I could be wrong, but just when you know. I'm planning my things and I'm watching my go-to. Like, you know, I gotta watch Christine. I love that fucking movie with the car. I hear they make it a remake. My Halloweens, and let's not discuss the fucking Halloween ends. Disaster, but... Um... Knee deep in Resident Evil in the month of October. And I want to love these things. I want to get immersed back into the game I played. And I talked about this on my other podcast. I'm a fan from the day one. I was there, I bought the game... Came home, played it. It's just amazing. Had friends around watching. One of those games where you... One of the first games where you didn't mind watching someone play. So here we are taking characters you love. They, you know, they tie a little bit of it together. Uh, Resident Evil 2, Leon was a rookie. And that's how he started getting involved. Some of the trauma thing was cool. But... Basically, you have this, someone's trying to do the right thing, you know, plays the rage's edge, always on the, you know, what you're willing to do. And there's a point that's made here where um, Leon and the, the hero of Pamistan, whatever the hell he is, Jason, I think, have a pretty good talk. And he notices um, Jason, Leon notices Jason, like, it looks like a traumatic event he's going through and he's reliving something. And they're kind of talking. When Leon starts saying about how he felt about Raccoon City and stuff, and Jason kind of stops him and goes, you were a police officer. Like, your duty was to protect them. But now your job is different. Meaning, like, when you're a CIA agent or a, a spy, whatever the fuck you are, your obligations and your you know, need for justice are different. So, you know, I, there are some little things, look, there are nuggets in everything you're going to find. I can go back to Welcome to Raccoon City, how much I like the actor for Wesker, and, you know, but then you think about what, how they shit on Leon in that fucking movie, and it's just stupid. But I can understand a fun romp, right? Uh, you know, uh, get through a movie in an hour and a half, and, eh, you know, 
this is so memorable or something. This one feels just jarring. You got four episodes and four episodes is the first season. I don't even know what the fuck the title of this thing. Is it coming back? I don't know. It just, I don't know. And the way they wrap things up and interject things, it just, I don't know, it just feels a little forced. I'd love to come on here. I, like, now I'm thinking of going back and watching that animated movie because I quite enjoyed it. But he has seen the, um, you know, the brother of somebody affected and trying to do the right things, going too far, turning into a monster, and just the words they use in the dialogue just didn't feel right. It, you know, I don't know. I feel like someone came in and cut up a hour and forty five minute animated movies type thing and just made it 30 minute episodes and I don't know it just doesn't feel up to par like good enough and it's weird because of what's been good in Resident Evil I don't know you want to go back to Resident the Village games like that is that the latest things they did I'm gonna guess that that's where they um were at from what I can remember I was playing like the village like there's a new storyline with uh, some character and he's searching for his daughter. Some bullshit and I think Chris Redfield is in that. And like I said, here we got Leon and your he's a fan favorite. You know, I love him from the games, everything, even the other movies I watch. And then you got Claire and it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Introduce a new character. Like it just Then you gotta tell that story and here's what you don't do. Okay, because my production staff should have supplied me with more information, but when you have scenes in an animated four-part series, and you're redoing the same scenes to tell the story, so, for instance, if you're, you tell 10 minutes of the guy's origin, but later you're going to reveal the full 20 minutes. You don't show the fucking 10 minutes again. Does that make sense? It's like... You know, um, it's like well, Picard did this, uh, season two, where there's an episode where they're piecing everything together with his childhood, and you're seeing the same footage again, and you're like, no, this is bullshit. I know the technique type thing. It just, you know, you, it's just an animated fucking four part series. How do you, you know, I don't know. And then how do you look at this and rate it as a season? I don't know. First season, four episodes. Blah. Not terribly bad. Not impressively good. Maybe that's part of its charm then. It's a, it's a steady takeoff point for what's to come. But if you're going to do four-part chunks like this, just, it's got to be... More impactful. It's got to feel like I'm building on a, you know, momentum. And it just feels like it's all lost here. And it feels like this blending of Japanese animation and the way they tell stories, it kind of clashes here. And one of the prime examples uh, back in the day, I say back in the day, but who knows, right? Uh, a Japanese animation style X-Men cartoon came out. And holy shit, they did Wolverine. I mean, it is gorgeous to look at. It is beautiful artist on an artistry in another level. Comic book adaption, nailing it. But the show is god awful. But it's my sensibilities, right? Is it me? You know, when I go to get my entertainment and what I'm looking for, and a different culture has a different, you know, feeling for it. And I'm all, that's fine. Like, I, I get it. Maybe that's just this. Maybe this is really love. The storytelling aspect of this is what pushes people and builds up that momentum for them. But it does it for me. I need a little more connective action with, you know, um, it almost felt like they were patting themselves on the back for being able to have like real movie shots with them 
people walking and uh, looking at each other and being like they're contemplating things. I get it. You, you, you got to. I mean, now we can make digital people like you know the animation from the games. This is spot on. You know how how are you going to compare that? But again, I'm going to say a weak connective story, and for fuck's sake, just do something with Claire. I don't want to have a fucking you know, wondering what's going on, have people show up for fucking magical reasons, and it doesn't feel right. She's, well, clear. what are you doing here? She's in the White House, and like, what the fuck is going on? Shouldn't she have a fucking clearance with some agency and be armed at all? Like, it's just enough. Like, okay, so what if in this fucking second game a maid, you know, grabbed a shotgun from underneath the counter, you know, whatever, let's make stories up, and... She becomes a character. But she's going to be at the diner across the street from the fucking White House, being a waitress, and Leon's going to go, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, you know, I'm a fucking waitress. So, hey, let's get involved together. No, they have to fit her in. Like, she's a volunteer worker in some civil war. It happened six years ago, and she's involved, and she finds this kid, and the kid shows her a painting, and he's mute. He can't talk. Of course he can't. And... She pieces together that this looks like Raccoon City. And then she's going to make an effort. She's going to talk to the Secretary of State or whatever the fuck that is. And Leon, hi, you're in the White House. And you're like, what the fuck is this? This is like bullshit. So it's that weak storytelling aspect that just blah, you know? Okay, you got them together. And you don't even get get them together as badasses. Like I said, I swear, maybe my memory is just making my own movie in my head. When I watched one of these movies, and I don't know who the side characters were, but whoever the main character was kind of said to the people, give her a gun. Meaning, yeah, she was in this predicament, it felt, it was an airport. I said, whatever fucking movie that is, it was an airport. And she's, like, waiting to pick up her stepsister or some bullshit in. Like, it, it felt more, like, believably involved. Just like they had to make up some fucking stories. Anyway, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness is not really an exciting chapter in this. Even if you call it four episodes, it doesn't feel like a ramped up start to an epic animated series. It kind of just gets by, if that's the question. But again, it might be sensibilities, where I am, the way I, you know... uh, consume content and whatever like you know different cultures so this is that maybe it's that blending maybe it is a good effort to blend it but i think you gotta have stronger foundation so i guess that's where i'm ending on this is a lot of shit i watched in october i'm a big horror fan love the games resident evil i go back from the beginning there were ups and downs of course in the games but you enjoy them for what they are for the most part, and they've tried to change things. You know, you've had a Mili Jovovich string of Resident Evil movies, and to me, they're fun romps with one of the great female action stars of our time. They're weak in some aspects, and then they tried to piece together the games and throw the fan stuff. But I felt like I had fun. Well, the actress has fun. I mean, she married the director, so... But we go from that, and when they reboot it, you got Welcome to Raccoon City, which I did my podcast on kind of recently, and it's a live-action, almost straight adaption. They take shots from the games, and it highlights things like that. But, again, weak story. My God, they shit on Leon. I don't know what you're fucking doing. It was insulting, and it really doesn't come together. And... And they got that TV show, and it was just, what the fuck is going on with the split in the time and flashbacks? Yeah, I thought this would be the thing that brought me back and leveled me off. It kind of didn't. It's a little bit of a disappointment. Is it a recommendation? I don't know. I mean, unless you're like me with a podcast that you watch content for, I think you can let this slide. I mean, maybe... Another four come out, another four, and you've got this cohesive story that there was, you know, they build up on the foundation of 
what's going on because spoiler alert you know the u.s government is you know shit balls bonkers making trying to make bio weapons and then our own inter black ops corrupt fucking agencies of trying to blame china to create some fucking thing and it just doesn't work the new characters and again it's just the setup feels so familiar is that part of its charm for people who like the games maybe but i'm gonna give this one you know a pass tell you to pass on it unless more builds up with this so uh you know again like i i want to watch things and love them and i do try to be fucking you know understanding of where i am and my frame of mind this didn't piss me off it didn't make me as angry as a live action tv show on netflix which was did the flashbacks when they were kids and they were older but again that's a missed opportunity that i kind of feel angry for because i do think those young actors were great i think the older actors that portrayed like it was great awesome talent some visual effects charm and practical effects it like kind of worked but then they did this jumping back and forth this just doesn't invoke a lot of stuff i can get mad at raccoon city because it was so close to the game that you about you want to be so you want to be pumped up and you know following this thing along and it lets you down this kind of just like blah blase it just i don't know it, was, it meanders around and just doesn't find its footing and when it does it's just i don't know I, I don't get it but it doesn't feel like it's worth that effort to even dive into it feels again is it the 28 minute episodes broken up that don't feel like they should have been broken up now again with my crack staff here um you know, all my all my papers and information here I think there's something here about um, it being uh, it was supposed to be a movie, and maybe that even kind of taints my bias. And that I read this a month ago and did notice, I tend to stay away from these things. It's only when I do these podcasts. So I don't know what's better. Is it more engaging as a you know entertainment vehicle to make Welcome to Raccoon City a live action movie that is based on the first and second game? shit on the characters and but make you feel something and you know uh the tv show where you saw the money was there the talent was there and it just i don't know fucking showrunner from supernatural just was you know sniffing glue and shit like i don't know but this is kind of it doesn't invoke i don't know again when you're thinking back in the day when you're playing the games and you know, you put your controller down, they show you this cutscene, and it's a massive fight, or it's a, you know, um, classic Resident Evil zombie scene where it focuses on the helmet of the police officer, and which has been recreated in the live-action movies. You know, you always said to yourself, they should make a movie like this. And, ag- and again, I'm... They're out there. They're, I just didn't haven't done them. Like I, I didn't do podcasts on them at the time, and I wasn't maybe was not even doing podcasts. But these things feel like they're non events. There, and maybe that's another piece I'm missing. Maybe there's the comic book limited series and the novels, because this takes place in between a certain game, uh, whatever, five, four, and five. I don't know gets crazy resident evil and their timelines and their story because i think like resident evil one to five is its own thing and when they came out with the continuations it's kind of different but they're still using some characters i don't know i haven't bought the games but i watched the walkthroughs the 17 fucking hour you know things that they go through and it's a game that you can watch other people play so it has that, but I don't know. Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. Shouldn't I be you know, a little bit more passionate about certain angles of this? It feels, you know, the story was diluted. Maybe it could have been 
I wouldn't be surprised if I found a fan at it and I, I enjoyed it a lot. Like, I don't know, is it that opening and then the outro and I'm not really Well okay, Marvel's conditioned me to be fucking waiting for fucking and mid credit cutscenes. So there you go. I mean maybe it's me also just not fucking getting to the other episodes. I'm, I'm watching the and you know, you wanna hear the music and stuff, it it's Resident Evil. Resident Evil. You know, like the fucking right from the video game. No, I don't get that in you know stupid scenarios and unbelievable shit should work in this type of situation, but it doesn't. Uh I don't know. I don't really know where to go from here. It's not memorable. It's not impactful. It's just there. And again, it could be just, you know, to pat themselves on the back to show what they can do. Yes, you can do the animations from the game. You can elevate it and make movies out of it or TV show. And like I said, it's done before. There's probably a fucking big list of them because, like I said, I've seen one. One was with the airport. I kind of enjoyed that. But again, just fucking make clear part of the team. Stop putting her fucking... It was going to be pizzeria delivery. It's not like Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Like, enough. I don't want to deal with it. And I don't know if it's fucking culture thing too. I don't know. But enough. The fucking volunteer work and... Same thing at the end. Installation. Leon does all the fucking work. I don't know. Make them badass. And I don't care if you were a fucking maid or a fucking flipping burgers at Burger King. You know, it's 20-something fucking years. Was it, I don't know, 90-something when the game came out? You gotta give them that legacy. You're, are you trying to build it up? You're gonna, you already made Leon, uh, you know, elevated from his rookie days in Resident Evil 2. And okay, Claire's not the gun-toting, kill zombies, whatever type, and she wants to be a volunteer, but you gotta weave it together better. Just, it doesn't, you know, doesn't do much for me. So I guess I'll end that, I'll end this there with that. Um, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness is a chapter you don't need to see. These four episodes don't feel impactful. It could be the launching point for uh, an arc of stories, and I get it. It's Leon involved in the politics, trying to keep these corporations from bringing it to a disastrous point, which is what I guess the show is d- did. The show showed Wesker with his clones and kind of weaved in the games, but then said, oh, well, the breakout happened. And I think the showrunner in that was even saying, well, what would it be like if we saw Leon 16 years later and all he fought for was you know, I, I, I get it. it maybe you have this long arcing idea that, you know, poof, right off my head and this is just a slow burn foundation I don't know I, I, I'd streamline things a little bit more I'd give these characters the weight they deserve and, and you know I'm so when and I'm a fucking I don't know what the fuck's going on. And she was this and she walks out the door. The guys are fucking in a firefight and she got and all of a sudden she fucking appears there. Is it like teleporters or were they like next door? Like I don't know what the fuck was going on. Sometimes you can't let that happen. And it's not just me being a pothead and you know. I guess it maybe it's me not being so interested. It's me not looking for. Um, things to pull me in and keep me in, and I don't know. Again, I'm human. Just wanted to really fucking have a great Resident Evil Halloween this year. That's so much to fucking dive into. I don't think you're gonna get another one after this. You'll probably get some stupid fucking, um, you know, scientific fucking article I read online or a Black Panther movie, which I wasn't a big fan of the first one, so... All right, let's end this now. Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, it's a, you can pass on it. Maybe for a big fan, you can get into it. It's really visually, uh, you know, an achievement in that sense, you know, to, but doesn't come together as an exciting chapter or 
interesting uh, first steps in a overarching story they want to tell. But you never know. I'm not uh, angry and super mad at it. i just not excited that much either. So I guess I'll leave that here. Hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.